good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Jill Live. You can catch all of our past episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're enjoying the great speakers and uh, guests that I have, I always learn from them. And I think you have been too. Please stop, leave a review. Let me know what you want to hear more about. Um, and today, I am so excited to introduce my new friend. Uh, we met at the Milken Institute, where we were both speaking on a panel on functional medicine and healing in all these different ways, the deep, deep art of healing. And I titled our talk today, Deep Healing, um, with Satya. <laughs> so with you. Um, so I'm going to introduce uh, Satya in just a moment, but I'm super excited about this topic because I functional medicine is amazing as far as the supplements and the lifestyle and the diet and all that stuff lays a foundation for healing. And I've done this for 20 years, but what I found in the last maybe five or seven years that that deep interpersonal work, that work on the soul level, on the heart level, on the level of hidden trauma, the patterns of thinking that we have, the way we show up in the world, and even our relationship to illness. We're going to dive deep into some of these things that maybe some of you have struggled with. And you've heard this word trauma. What does that really mean? How is it affecting you? And what I want to talk about today is, is some of the deep inner work that can be done and that Satch is doing in the world. Because these kinds of levels of healing, I've realized in my own life, um, are so much more profound than even the vitamin C or the vitamin D or some of the things that we take. Those are great. Those are part of a healing program. But this work on a cellular level about what we believe to be true about the world and ourselves and the things, how we interpret our experiences from the past and how we can even change and reinterpret that experience. We're going to dive into that today. And I'm so excited because to me, this level of healing is more powerful than any supplement, drug, nutrient, or even lifestyle that we can do. So welcome, Satya. Thank you so much for coming in from Portugal. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Jill. It was a beautiful meeting in, at Milken Institute and a great, great uh, talk that we all shared in that moment. It was so special. And that's, I feel like I found some lifetime friends, you and Anna, and we were just talking. I'm hoping to come visit you in Portugal sometime <laughs> soon. Well, let me formally introduce you and then we'll dive right in. So Satya is a consciousness activist who has dedicated the last 15 years to expanding and evolving human consciousness. Throughout this time, she has facilitated transformation retreats of over 60,000 individuals worldwide and the founder of Working with Satya of the Awareness Facilitator School. She's developed a holistic approach that combines modern therapy techniques with ancient wisdom. Her method integrates meditation, breath work, primal work, trauma healing, bioenergetics, energy reading, exposure work, and ancient rituals, and is currently being used to train facilitators around the world. She's traveled extensively in search for the most ancient healing methods and the immense wisdom that still resides with indigenous tribes. She received teachings from indigenous people, and she now carries their tradition and brings ancient wisdom and its medicine, sacred plants, and natural psychedelics with modern therapy to to support the needs and intention to all of those who seek her guidance. Um, she has been a worldwide speaker at so many places. And again, that's how we met at Milken, which was an honor for both of us to be there. I know. Um, welcome, welcome. And thank you again for being here. Thanks so much, Dr. Jill. You're welcome. So I always love to start with story because we all have a story and our soul's journey involves how did we get to where we're at? And usually we've gotten to where we're at because it's what our soul longs to do in the world is our soul's purpose. I'd love for you to tell a little bit about how did you get to where you're at and how did you kind of find your soul's purpose? So um, I'm going to be very direct. I hope that you all receive my, you know, my story with open heart. So I, I, I born in a high cultural level family but I was sexually abused from five till 13 years old. And it had a great impact on who I was and who I became. So I, I saw since very young age how that sexual abuse was turning me it, into a person that I was shutting down. I was isolating myself. And thank God I had surf. I was uh, the first generations of surfers in Portugal wow. and and I found meditation at the same age at 11. So in that time there was no internet as we know 
was I'm 45 now. So I was a lot of time in libraries trying to find some resources to help me because in that time, psychology was a taboo. It was only for sick people, mental sick people. And so I started very uh, in a very young age reading and trying to practice meditation and to understand how I could allow myself to deal with that. Of course, the maturity of my uh, emotional and mind, emotional system and mind was totally different from what is now. And I want to say that my mother was a psychologist. Wow. So imagine in the house of science and psychology and I couldn't really ask for help. So I started to do that. And at 16, I found a therapist. I asked my mother, I need a therapist. And uh, and I dived deeply into spirituality. So what I found was in spirituality, I was gaining a certain awareness of how our life goes beyond the matter world, beyond the body, beyond the physical sensations. And so I was meeting peace in the spiritual world and how I could go beyond my story, that the story didn't need to own me, but I could own my story. And with psychotherapy, I found a way to integrate all the experience in a way that pain became wisdom. Of course, this took years. So what I saw was on the level of psychotherapy, I could remain the victim forever just acknowledging or becoming attached to my story. In spirituality, I could fly away and maybe, and what I was feeling, I was becoming even more far away from what we call this life here in this dimension. So along the years, studying more, developing myself more, going to Amazonia, to the deserts, to where I could find indigenous tribes to understand how they would perceive healing. I understood that for the modern man and woman, it would be highly important to unite science and spirituality so we could be embraced uh, by our whole system. So I study a lot of trauma, uh, psychotherapy, meditation, and ancient rituals and religion. And, And I understood that both are a continuation of Uh, of everything that we are. So on the level of personality structure, that is what we have here, the condition of our childhood, the social condition, the way we live together, how we relate, how we communicate. We need psychotherapy. We need conscious work about how we engage together and how somehow we are attached to belief systems that they were passed to us but it's not who we truly are. So understanding that the child borns in a certain way, but all the parents, even if they are fantastic or terrible in a way, because they are not aware of what they do, what happens is they can't nurture the child on a deeper level so she can really feel safe and love and she feel worthy. So what happens is the child, as on a certain level starts to create a persona to call that attention, to feel that love. So if I can please my parents, I will receive attention, even if it's negative or positive. So we start to identify with this persona and we start to live from that space. So if I believe that I'm too much because my parents would say, don't run, don't shout, I will try to become you know, more gentle. But that starts an inner conflict inside of us. So we feel always that, who am I? It's like I'm betraying myself. It's unconscious process. Something is missing on myself. And we try to fulfill, you know, with being successful, having more material life, more relations. But at the end, and working with more than 60,000 people with all kinds of uh, population from very successful persons, politicians, entrepreneurs, till people in the jungle, that they all have the same problems as us, indigenous, what happens is what is lacking is our authenticity. 
what is lacking is our connection with sacredness that somehow in this fast, furious society, we don't have space to, to create. So, and then, of course, the spiritual life allowing us to go into a deep state of relaxation, accepting who we are, the wounds that we carry, uh, how to fulfill them internally. That brings us to a place that we know that we are bigger of what happens to us. And somehow we have the potential to create that. And that links to spirituality. So if we have the infinite potential, who are we? And to believe in that, you know, immense possibilities that we are a never ending story and we can be the authors of that story. We need to find our principles. We need to find our courage. We need to find the connection we, with the invisible world where all these thoughts and ideas, they live before they become matter, become from a dream to re reality. Um, so it was in a very short way, of course, like this, that I become the person that I really, um, I'm still there. Huh? I'm still working on myself and I will always be there. It's an endless path. But I could really change the pain that I had into wisdom. And I committed myself to help everyone to do the same. Oh, love every word of what you're saying, Satya. And I so agree. It's those moments of suffering and difficulty. And I'm so sorry you had to go through what you did, but the fact that it created in you this strength and this empowerment and this gift as a teacher is so beautiful. And isn't it great? I've had suffering in my life as well. And when we can transform that suffering into purpose and meaning and then help other people to do the same, there's no greater joy because truly we all have suffering and we've all had trauma, big T, little T, there's all kinds of spectrum. And I'm sure as you've gone across the world, you've seen that commonality. So many times we think we're the only one. And even as we're talking today, if you're out there listening and, and you're relating to, yeah, I've suffered too. First of all, I'm sorry that you've had to suffer, but if you can grab a hold of that and look for meaning and purpose and allow that suffering to transform you. Just last night, I was reading uh, Richard Rohr and he says, we suffer to get well we surrender to win, we die to live, and we give it away to keep it. <laughs> and I love that, like so much, because it's the principles that go across all faiths and all um, nationalities, like this idea that in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the pain and the heartache and what you've experienced, there is beauty. And I'm like I said, I'm sorry for the suffering. But what's happened is you've transformed that and you're teaching others to do the same. And if you're listening out there and feel hopeless, there is hope. And there's there's people like Satya and me on the medical spectrum that are hopefully those guides to, to help you to get to that new place. So like I said, thank you for sharing. Um, so where if someone's listening and they're they're touched and they're like, yeah, I've gone through difficulty or I've been abused or I've had things. And first of all, let's talk about how it affects the physical body, because I see people with medical illnesses, autoimmunity, cancer, and you name all the other things. And many times the deep root causes are related to these beliefs about ourselves. So let's maybe first talk a little bit about how you see the work that you do actually manifest in physical healing, even though it's all here. <laughs> I, I believe, I, I really believe that the body is not separated from the mind, from the emotions and from the spirit, from our soul. So the body uh, is more dense, has matter, has a, a pace that our mind is much faster. We can imagine, we can create emotions are um, the, the link between what we think and the sensations in the body. And of course, the feelings are the subjective meaning that we give to the experience. I want to say, too, that you don't need to have a very intense experience to call it trauma. We can have traumas in a totally different spectrum because what happened to me can have a consequence and what happened to another person, exactly the same situation, has another consequence, totally different. Maybe for me it's lighter, for another it's heavier or vice versa. So a trauma is not what happens to you, it's how you relate with the experience. 
what that provoked in you. So, for example, just parents that they were shouting with each other, maybe for a child is a it's a really big trauma. You, you feel the nervous system uh, very activated. So what do I see on the body level? The consequence is a nervous system that becomes activated or totally, totally numb. So the person goes nervous and anxious through life or a person just isolates and withdraw. So they don't trust on themselves. They don't believe on themselves. They don't fight for what they want. And these ones are in conflict most of the time. Signs, physical signs in the body are, as you said, all these diseases, cancer is one of the biggest diseases that is a manifestation of trauma after some years. The, um, but you can relate, you can observe yourself, for example, if your body shakes sometimes without any reason and you don't understand what triggered you, if you became anxious without anything that you acknowledge or you start sweating, cold or hot, um, if you, for example, have nightmares that you don't understand the reason, that you can't really fall asleep and you are triggered all the time for situations, and you, you want to run away, for example. These are emotional signals that something is inside of you. But when you start to become sick all the time, physical sick, something in your system is highly traumatized. And normally what I perceive with years of working with people is our body is a container for all our experience. So it will manifest the quality of your inner life. So if your body is becoming sick, especially year after year or week after week, like pain in the throat, Many times the pain in the throat is because you can't really express what is really going on in your soul, in your heart. You are afraid. Maybe because when you were a child, everyone would say, shut up. You are dumb or your opinion doesn't matter. So, and what we work is we go to the childhood or other dimensions mm -hmm. uh, because one of the ancient healings that we use is natural psychedelics in the jungle. That is a profound work. It's a journey into your unconscious life. So you remember what happened to you and to your ancestral lineage because we receive the memories from, from DNA, but not only the emotional um heritage comes sometimes sometimes we have feelings that we don't understand even why but these are highly connected with our grandparents for example people that they were on the second world war you know yes. there's a lot of fear a lot of mistrust black people the way we enslave them or indigenous people how we pretend that their way of lives and rituals and culture doesn't matter so they feel totally isolated and humiliated so all these are easy in our body, is manifested. So I believe that medical care and this awareness about what happened to us, they need to live together. Because if we have a good physical body, like with all the vitamins, it's a support yes. to all the emotional life and consciousness to flourish and to heal. Oh. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein Barr, and mold and biotoxin related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. And to heal. Oh, I love that. And so profound. Like I said, 
Um, and you earlier talked about um, whether those messages in our childhood that our parents were doing the best they could often, they're usually, but, but they could maybe nurture a certain piece. And so like I learned, you know, a while back that that achievement oriented life, which is very common in, especially in the U.S., the um, achievement, I always, I titled a chapter of my book, Will Work for Love, basically like the idea that working, achieving success is the way of receiving love. And maybe there's a message way back that, again, it, my parents were amazing. So it wasn't their fault, but I somehow perceived that I was only worthy of love when I was achieving and getting good grades. And so then I kept going on with that. But that can be an addiction like any other and a response to trauma that I'm not enough, that just being is not enough. I have to do right that doing and being. So how do you start? Obviously, the psychedelic work and all that is profound. But if you're doing some, you know, early work or say someone's like, well, what, how would that benefit me? What would you talk to someone who's just interested in this and, and not, not really had any experience? Where would they start? What would you say to them? Um, First of all, the psychedelic work is very delicate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a drug by the opposite is considered medicine in these countries, in these cultures, because they have the capacity to open ourselves to places that sometimes not even therapy for a long time can help us because we understand with the mind, but somehow we are disconnected between the mind, the, the feelings, the heart yes. and the physical body. So in that, the, the natural psychedelics, they low the, the, the defense self mechanism so they low it so we can have access of it going back to the experience and to rewrite the story, to understand even the reasons why. But it's very delicate. So this work, they need to have a preparation. We need to understand if medically you are able to do physically, because there's a lot of people in their condition that they can have, for example, diabetes, depressions, schizophrenia, heart problems. There's ways to, to work with them or we can't even work. And there's the the work itself and then the integration mm -hmm. that takes a long time and we need to be supported. So it's something that we need to work with people. And if for any reason you feel the call, you need to take information. You need to understand if the person doesn't do any, any medical interview about your physical body, about your mental history, about your lineage even, you know, you need to be sure that maybe they are not aware of the, how they can really support you and do a true work with you. But that, I, I was going to yes. say, I love that you're saying that. I want to emphasize because this is becoming more popular now. But the things that you said, number one, it is sacred. This is this is not something that, that I think I, the sacredness of it cannot be emphasized enough. And number two, um, the, the container that you create as an expert for these people who are going through that is so critical. I believe that with all my heart because people are experimenting and not really having that container. I think without the safe container to process what comes up, it can do more harm than good, right? So I love that you say that because I'm all for your work and I love that, but we need to encourage people to be with an expert like you or, or someone who's doing that because it really is a place where number one, there's sacred work being done, but number two, there's things that can come up and you need to have the container, the group, the support, the expert with you to be able to process that in a safe way. Yes, because this is about our life and health mm -hmm. is not another journey that you right. want to know yourself or to right. relax. No, it's right. the opposite. It's really profound mm -hmm. and it will open doors to spirituality in a very deep way that normally in our society, we are not aware of it. So all the experience about dissolving the ego, feeling oneness, maybe feeling love for the first time for, you know, the entire humanity can be very overwhelming because then you look how you are living your life. How are, how is the quality of your relations? And you feel a big conflict mm -hmm. and the process of transformation, uh, it's more uh, a melting yeah. a destruction of so many belief systems, daily life habits, that we need support is strong till we go to a moment 
where we integrate and we really see our true change and takes time because we live in this dimension because we live with our families we live with people and we are people with addictions we are people with fears we are people that we want to be totally safe even death you know we don't speak about death in our society and it's the only thing that we are sure that will happen yes yes i totally yeah. no i love that i want to talk just briefly about that because that's a hard thing to talk about especially and even in medicine that's part of the thing with physicians who are trained like myself we're taught to do everything we can to avoid death which is great right we hopefully are saving lives but ultimately every patient i see is terminal and if i don't have a good grasp of understanding of that and thinking of how do i take them to even a better place spiritually emotionally because this physical body will eventually expire and so and and to, to how do we get into that relationship where we can honestly say i'm not afraid and that's a hard place to be but i think it's possible I feel like I can say I'm not afraid of death. And that's something that kind of freaks people out. <laughs> um, but how do you talk about, that's a whole nother topic, but that is an important thing because the more comfortable we can get with this process, this body, our limitations, I think the more we can enjoy and fully immerse ourselves in life. So I believe that we should start speaking openly that, you know, one day we will pass away and the body will remain and then, and then, of course, existential question starts to open, like, but am I eternal or I am just here? And that will bring questions to life. If I will end, how I really want to live my life? Mm -hmm. Because what I see and working with people on uh, terminal cases is people normally, they were so afraid to live their life exactly how they believe because they were afraid to be rejected, because they were afraid that they don't belong to a society or a community, because they were still craving for attention and love and recognition. So when they come to the, their end of life, they feel that they, you know, so many things that I didn't do for fear, yeah. that I was, you know, just busy trying to, like, not feeling the pain of life. And one thing that death can show us is, okay, if we don't know where we are going, we have this life now. And the more we live our life according to our principles, the more we can relax because we understand that we used our time in our favor, not against no one, but in our favor, we fulfilled our I can say mission, but at least our soul that came here, for example, to really be a mother yeah. or to become a great doctor. Of course, all the traumas, all the experience behind that take us there, they need to be reviewed, reviewed so we can understand if we are really living what we believe or we if we are a response to what happened to us. So when we start to look to death, I believe that preparing people to understand how they can consciously accept what will happen can bring peace instead of fear. Yeah. And, and this is what happens. People are afraid to let go of the body. People are afraid to let go of life. And most of the time it's because they didn't really live their lives. Uh. Wow. So this work that you're doing in this, even in healthy people is transformative that can actually affect that downstream fear of death because they're actually fully embodied living their best life in where their soul is meant to be. And I love that because you're really kind of opening. It's almost like um, looking behind the doors and, and opening people up to what do I really want to do? Who am I really here to be? Because so often we have the mask, right? And those masks got put on in childhood because of fear or because of rejection or because of trauma. So you're kind of helping people to take off that mask and be fully themselves. And to have the courage yes. to be it. Yeah. Because normally the entire society will tell you, go to the left. Yes, yes. Everyone is going. Yeah. And it, it, it's like you need to have a lot of courage and bravery to say, I will let go of this because I'm not happy here and I will risk even if I fall apart and I break my knees and yes. I go to the ground, at least I will try 
at least I will give myself to what I believe. And this is courage. This is, you need a lot of courage because your family, your friends, you know, they are living in a certain way. And that's why it's so important to have people like you, people that people that they really transform their lives with books, with videos by their sides saying, you know, it's possible. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. Because you're right. Because you're that story. I hope to be that story too. Is like you are that story. <laughs> I'm oh, sure. Um, tell it. Can you think of an example? And obviously, you don't have to use names or anything. But just like maybe a story of someone that you that really you saw this transformation in the work that you did. Just anything that comes to mind. So many. I know, right? <laughs> so, many. so many. But I will tell you two things. One that was. Um, I think five days ago, uh, an Ukrainian, uh, one of my second homes is Ukraine. I, I'm there for the last 13 years working. So with the war, uh, I had to stop going there. So I have a lot of people that we brought from Ukraine. Uh, we sent more than uh, 700 tons of medications and food. We gave homes, free homes and jobs for more than 3,000 people. So we of course with the support of a, a lot of people it's not only me and my team a lot we were a lot together and the other day after this uh, uh flaw that happened into the country with uh, another attack uh, a ukrainian from my team came and came to to deliver something and she said can i see just a little bit and I said of course julia tell me and she's just grab her face and start crying. Say, Satya, I don't want to surrender to hate, but today is really hard. <laughs> I don't want to teach my daughter to hate Russians because I know it's not the entire country, but today is becoming really hard. And I just said, you know, cry, Julia. You are such an amazing soul. You know, you are seeing inside of you this hate coming, this pain that is immense. You know, she had to leave her country, start a new life. And she has the courage to say, I'm feeling hate and I want to fight against it. I don't want to surrender to it. So this is the product of years of years of a conscious work about herself. It's amazing. I was astonishing, astonished with her. I was like, wow, yes. I'm from a very brave soul. Because the easiest to become depressed, you know, um, to hate. Yes. It's easier. Yes. And it's human. I'm not saying this, not, it's human. But she was fighting. And, she, and I say, I'm here with you, no matter what, we are together. And another thing today, I went for the first time. We have a program that is uh, yoga, uh, prison yoga that came from the United States and we implemented in um, our Portuguese prisons. And Ines Ayr, she is the founder of this project. And today, for the first time, uh, she invited me to give classes about consciousness and healing inside of a prison. And I want to tell you that... It was the most beautiful raw honesty. It was existential questions. It was about sharing what really happened to their child back then and how they started to walk this path of criminality and drugs and, and you know, and hate and fear. And when we open up and we say, you know, you are locked now, but most of us, we are all in prison, all in cage of masks and belief systems even out there. And it, it is your child still in pain that brought you here because you couldn't choose differently. You didn't have the strength yes. somehow. And he, Dr. Jill, Jill, it was beautiful seeing their eyes saying, Maybe I can do something. So, you know, we are all together in this boat of life. Yes. And I believe the more cautious we become, the more aware of our inner life, the result of so many experiences, how we fall down, how the shadow attacks us in terms of emotions and thoughts. 
we can do something and the body will follow that consciousness. So that's why I see many times people full of pain, chronic pain. And when we go deeply into their trauma, that chronic pain disappears. Yes. After oh. so many years of medication. Yes. Thank you for sharing those drives and tears. <laughs> but, but it's so profound because what two things that you shared were shame begets shame in so many of the worst behaviors that we see in criminals or even in ourselves or anyone is related to shame. And when we heal that shame with compassion, which is what you brought to those prisoners, you brought this deep compassion to see them for who they were, who they were before they had to put on all those masks to survive. And you saw them and by seeing them and seeing that woman, the Ukrainian, that's your gift. You see people at the soul level. And when you give them that gift of deep compassion, that's transformative. And even if we let you listening out there, haven't done all that work as we can embody compassion to ourselves first, and then to the people that we serve and love around us, that is the power to change a broken world. It's compassion. And you just so demonstrated that so beautifully. And I can tell that every bit of work that you do at a deep level, it's the compassion that you show to humanity that's transforming one person at a time. So I am I'm touched and grateful, <laughs> even just for our conversation. Um, where can people find you and hear more about the work that you're doing? So we we are at uh, working with Satya website that is workingwithsatya.com and at our Instagram. And soon a book will come out. Yay. And you know, and all over the world where we are traveling, uh, teaching people to become awareness facilitators people that they want to come to retreats or to have online sessions. So we are really there for people. And uh, I hope step by step that we can reach the biggest amount of people, but from a, a true honest space, sacred space, treating people, anyone has sacred because is what we are. We are, we are sons and daughters of this life. And this life is a mystery. It, it's not just matter how we were created till how science can't explain totally yes. it can't be still on the search and that search is beautiful and it's important but if we stop and think we don't have an answer and that is magical is mysterious it's it's what makes our soul to search for more. And I believe that we are in a period of true evolution for all of us. We are having the possibility to really transform ourselves and coming out the daily life that is only mechanical and material and eating and having sex and working and to go to a place of deeper connection. We disconnected from nature. Nature is our home. We need to recover. And that's why I really bow to indigenous uh, cultures because they still connect yes. and they, they still live in harmony and respect. They really feel it. It's their mother yes. giving them food, air, water. And we lost this. Mm -hmm. So this connection with uh, uh, the ecosystem as we are part of it is like a spiritual search for who we truly are, for our place in this planet. Yes. And if we are the only beings that we can create, science, poetry, language in this level, this deeper connection that we even find place to heal the body and others, compassion. We should be the keepers of life. We should be the protectors yes. of oh. all life. Wow. Well, it has been such a joy to talk to you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom here. And uh, I can't wait till your book comes out. We'll have to have you come back to talk about that. Um, but blessings to you, my friend. Deep gratitude. And I, I wish that a lot of people the biggest amount of number of people can listen to you because your message is really important and really touch my soul. So I hope. Thank you. Thank you.